QNT from its all-time low price did over a 2000x. XTC from kind of the lower candle body since like maybe the last 3-4 years, that did over a 450x from that low. Believe it or not, there is still tremendous opportunity in the altcoin market, especially for those that can wait. What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. We're going to dive into Bitcoin, XRP, HBAR, and a variety of altcoins, but first I had to cover Celsius. As we can see, the ticker is CEL. In the past roughly two days from this wick, we can see we've climbed over 1,600%. What's going on? We have some gaps right here, as you can see. Let's zoom in a bit. We have some gaps right here that have in fact been closed by this recent candle, and that would be kind of similar to maybe examples back here. Notice we have some gaps in liquidity right here, and then this candle, of course, wicked and closed those gaps in liquidity. So I want to play it safe. I'm steering clear of Celsius. I've personally never used the Celsius platform or the Cell token. Besides BlockFi a little bit, I've only really used Nexo, and I do actively use Nexo today. Now, keep in mind, during bear markets, during these types of liquidations, there is risk with everything. So please do your own research. Nothing is guaranteed in the space, but I personally prefer Nexo. I've never deep dived into Celsius, but I do like that Nexo has necessary insurance, some licenses, things like that. And they're insured by BitGo, which is a huge custodian, which actually built those enterprise-grade XRP wallets years ago and is also integrated with Casper. And you can see they're also audited. $12 million assets under management, 4 million users, 200 available jurisdictions. So this is actually linked in the YouTube video description along with my link tree. Me personally, I am steering clear of lending a lot of assets. I am steering clear of taking any type of collateralized debt positions or getting loans right now. I do not want to risk it. It's not worth the stress. So please be safe. Buddy's reaching out. Hey man, I might take a small loan and buy crypto here. If you cannot stomach losing all of that and paying that interest off, I would not do it. It's just not worth it. Now, speaking of Celsius, we can see the real plan C on Twitter. I said a major sell short squeeze is coming early signs. The shorts are playing a funding rate fee of 14.4% every 24 hours. This is clearly not sustainable and also 20 million worth of sell will have to be bought back to close these short positions. Keep an eye on this. As you can see, he's alluding to that same crazy wick we saw, that 1600% pump. And I am not telling anybody to buy sell. I'm simply showing the chart. And also in the YouTube video description, if you decide to create an account on Nexo, you can get $25 using this link below. And I know this is a weird scenario with Celsius doing this, but keep an eye on other alts. Now, this is super interesting. and We're going to talk about Bitcoin, but I wanted to point this out. The entry risk map by Bitcoin by the real plan C. This is the same gentleman that showed that confluence floor model a while back. So we actually made this giant risk map of the Bitcoin price chart comparing it to really, I'd say maybe 2013, 2014. So we're talking years of data and we can see it's color coded according to risk. And we can see that we are near the bottom of this channel, meaning that you typically don't want to buy Bitcoin when it's up here in this reddish orange color at the top of the channel. But when you buy at low during these green colors and you are a long term investor, not an investor that buys a crypto or an altcoin that some influencer talked about and you expected the pump in a week somebody that is truly understanding this technology and what it will do long term. Then entering around this level, historically on the long term, has been extremely profitable. Next up, we have John E. Deaton, one of my favorite attorneys in this XRP community in the crypto space, and big thanks to all the other attorneys that provide their valuable input. So, he goes on to say, retweeting Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple's tweet, I do see why Ripple is disliked by many of the industry players. BlockFi, for example, is laying off 20% of its employees. Coinbase is laying off 18% of its employees. I also saw uh, Crypto.com laying off a certain percentage of their employees because of the current market. Ripple, the company, on the other hand, plans to hire 300 people in the next 12 to 18 months while spending $100 million in legal fees while fighting an SEC lawsuit. Yeah, and just like this gentleman, Digital Space Rider 2.0, while also donating millions. Remember, there was what, a roughly $100 million or $250 million creator fund for NFTs on the XRP ledger. And no, I'm not happy about these market liquidations and price dumps and people having a hard time. I know a guy that took his life after the Terra Luna debacle, and it still messes with me to this day. But focus on the projects that are growing for the long term, that are reinvesting. No, I'm not happy about the circulating supply of Algo and HBAR increasing, but are they building for a better tomorrow, a better future, a more valuable token in the long term to secure the network? Yes. Next up, we have Goldman Sachs begins trading a derivative product tied to Ethereum. Now, I've always wondered how much Ethereum Goldman Sachs actually owns. I'm certain just like they most likely manipulate other markets that I would not be surprised that they, you know, short Ethereum, double their position, improve, rinse and repeat, and are really just working the retail investor. Next up, we have Bank of America, a Ripple partner survey shows consumers are not done with crypto yet. 
This market happens in cycles. We see 90% drops followed by consolidation, then the next bull market, and then we explode for typically another 10x, 50x, maybe 100x plus for some altcoins. QNT from its all-time low price did over a 2,000x. XDC from kind of the lower candle bodies since like maybe the last 3-4 years, that did over a 450x from that low. Believe it or not, there is still tremendous opportunity in the altcoin market, especially for those that can wait. Now, looking at the Bitcoin price chart, let's bump it up to the weekly really quick. I just want to point out a few things. So looking at the Bitcoin USD price chart, we're going to turn the lights on. Next sign of support obviously would be the recent all time high set in December of 2017, just under $20,000. Looking at the Brave New Coin Index, this is the Bitcoin Liquidity Index, we can see that we are sitting right on that 200 weekly moving average. Now, historically, as we know, per a variety of Confluence floor models, that we've usually held this level for the most part. March 2020, we wicked below it. Will this be the first time that we, in fact, start closing weekly candles below this level? And yes, I know that we closed, you know, right around there. We wicked below, but typically we always come back up and then hold this level and then eventually climb yet again. So time will tell and notice that we do have a gap up here at roughly, let's just say $27,400 that will close in the future. Question is, do we dump first or are we going up there? In the first time in two to three cycles, roughly 10 years of price history since the first Bitcoin Genesis block in 2009, then we had the Bitcoin halving again in 2012, 2016, 2020. The next Bitcoin halving is going to be in 2024 around February to March. And notice during each of these vertical lines right there, Bitcoin halving, bull run. Bear market, Bitcoin having bull run. Bear market, Bitcoin having bull run. The next Bitcoin having will be in 2024. Now notice, we see these purple rectangles. After each bear market, we have never in history came back to backtest or break below that previous all-time high. The first high of one of the first cycles, the next high of one of the first cycles broke through, never came back down. Is this the first time in history that we are coming back down to either backtest or break through it? And this is entirely possible. Remember, this is just one model, and for anybody in statistics, that famous adage, I'm probably going to butcher it, but uh, all models are useful until they're not. So definitely interesting, and I'm also going to keep an eye on that Bitcoin risk map. Now, what's really interesting is we have a lot of altcoins, despite circulating supply changing for some of these. Notice that HBAR circulating supply has increased by 215%, so over 2x since September. And that's what I wanted to point out, like September 5th, the supply has increased by over 2x, meaning that if HBAR never increased their supply, the price today would be sitting over two times higher. So instead of six and a half cents, we're actually looking closer to 14 cents if the supply never changed. Even if Bitcoin dumped, the price would still be at 14 cents. Now notice HBAR's all-time high, I call it 58 cents, to that wick is about 89.5%. This wick was about a 92% drop. So let's go right here, about 89.5%. Let's look at Algo, for example. Now, this supply, instead of going up by 2x or, you know, 215%, this increased about 94, 95%. Let's see if this is similar. All right, almost 89%. So despite the differences in supply increase, they both dropped about 89%. Interesting. Let's pull up QNT really quick. I want to show you this. The QNT supply, at least according to CoinMarketCap, has not changed at all. Still just over 12 million. From its all-time high price, has it dropped? Look at this. It still dropped about 89 or 90 percent, meaning that QNT, HBAR, and ALGO all dropped the exact same percentage, yet QNT supply never changed, Algorand increased by 94, 95 percent, and HBARs increased even more than double than ALGO. Yet, this crazy algorithm that is governing the crypto prices that we see, or maybe it's just these liquidity providers and market makers, somehow they all dropped around that same percentage. What are the odds of that? Super strange. Now, XRP compared to the 2021 high, wick to wick dropped about 84.8%. XLM dropped about 87%. Assets like Glimmer, depending where you measure, they're well above 90%. Now, I also want to share the Bitcoin futures gaps. There's just a few. Now, keep in mind, there are some lower gaps, and we'll see if they ever do, in fact, close. But what I want to show you now is we have an open gap still at about, let's say, 19K. We also have a gap, two gaps open above. So we have one at 34,800, and we have another gap at about 27, maybe 27.5. So do I believe that these gaps close in the future? Yes, I do. The question is, which happens first and when are we going to have any type of retracement? Notice we had a retracement here. Are we going to have any type of relief rally to close these gaps at any point? For those that truly believe the bear markets here in Bitcoin is, you know, crashing, crashing, I'm personally going to be waiting for a retracement to even consider selling some of my alts. And for now, I'm really just dollar cost averaging. And I still have my super low limit buy orders that I've set with my OTC broker, not using Tether. I'm not risking that. It's in US dollar. I have some Hail Mary plays. I'm positioning myself to be ready for the worst case scenario. I'm ready for maybe a retracement. I'm ready for a slow and steady grind sideways.
Because with my OTC broker that's linked in the YouTube video description, that exchange will not go down. If Coinbase or KuCoin or Binance goes down, this has redundancy with dozens of liquidity providers. I have backups for my backups. This is how the big boys do it. This is how the institutions do it. Do you think they're just buying on Coinbase? No, they're going to be using OTC desks and institutional-based custody platforms, or maybe even just Coinbase custody. The institutional players are taken care of. You and I, the retailers, they don't really care about us. That means for HBAR's price chart, for example, or XRP, if we go to a dollar now, oh boy, I'm a happy camper. But on the other hand, if we do visit crazy low prices and Bitcoin completely dumps and I fill any of my orders, I'll be able to quadruple 4x my position in a variety of my favorite alts. So there's a few options for projects that I believe will be here for the next three to five years. And HBAR, I believe, is one of them. We retrace now, start moving on our way to a dollar plus, I'm happy. We go lower, I'm improving my position. One of the worst scenarios is if we just go sideways, because if we go sideways, I'd much rather we just dump so I can buy more and get more bang for my buck. Going sideways or just a really slow creak and climb back up, that would be, for me, the most pain. Now, talking about the SWIFT network and to put XRP into perspective, this organization for cross-border payments is roughly sending over $5 trillion worldwide each day. And this is accounting for inflation, nonstop monetary printing. Now, this was on FinCEN's website a while back. Now, I'm going to touch on that as well and what Darren Moore has pointed out, because remember, FinCEN and the Department of Justice already considered XRP to be a virtual currency. And even according to Darren Moore, FinCEN is bigger than the SEC. And that was like 2015. Now, speaking of SWIFT, the behemoth that controls the market that was built 40 plus years ago, I mean, even you could argue the DTCC before the Fed, but really controlled by the most powerful two to five. Now, according to Ashish Birla, he said that Citibank, JPM, and HSBC, also a Ripple partner, oversees 80% of cross-border transactions. RippleNet, everybody thinks Ripple's the bad guy. No, they're leveling the playing field with XRP to give equal opportunity to hundreds of thousands of financial institutions, PSPs, payment service providers, and other types of banks, instead of just letting the two to five or two to three big bullies control everything. We have all kinds of expansion. We have RippleNet continues to expand throughout Europe as Modular scores a new deal. Modular utilizes RippleNet in order to power its solution for enabling seamless payments for the UK and Europe. Sandy Young pointing this out, RippleNet continues to expand fast, seamless, cost-effective payments from Brazil to the UK and Europe, powered by Ripple and Modular. Constant expansion, hiring new people as some of the biggest firms, even Coinbase is laying people off, what was it, like 18% of their company. That's insane. Yet Ripple continues to push forward. We also had that news come out the other day, MoneyGram partners with Stellar XLM and the Stellar blockchain to launch USDC transfer services. Now, I don't know, I don't have any inside information if Tether actually does implode someday, but I just want to steer clear because the reserve amounts behind Tether are not super clear. And due to the fact that they actually have crypto as the reserve amount and crypto is volatile, it's not just a US dollar peg. They actually have to over collateralize any case of liquidation. So for me, not financial advice, I think that USDC by Circle and Center is a much safer stablecoin and also had the blessings by the former acting comptroller of currency of the United States government. Okay, so again, Stellar, speaking at Davos, Casper, Ripple, um, HBAR, Algo, all these huge tokens and projects. XLM has been taking a huge hit with the market, but I do believe in these assets. Here's a post I did going over the futures, and this was actually last year, June 2021. I can't believe it's been a year. These were those old futures I was talking about, so we still had those gaps around there. Those are officially closed. We do have an open gap around that level right there, so let's just call it you know, around 19K, and this is one of the gaps I was pointing out. Remember when Bitcoin first went up to 65K and crashed and everyone said we're going to zero? It was like, eh, because we had an open gap up here. And what happened for the Bitcoin price chart? After bottoming out here, we went up and created a new all-time high price in November around 69,000, closing that gap. So gap theory is interesting. It's just another confluence. It does not guarantee everything, but it is helpful at looking at the market, especially when you see it at, you know, a clear 50% retracement. We can also see up here at the top at market cap, we are officially below a $1 trillion crypto market cap. All I see is a greater ROI and opportunity long term. Next up, we have XRP Crypto Wolf sharing one of our favorite people in the space, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. And I'm being sarcastic. She wants to restrict 401k plans from adding cryptocurrency. She publicly shared that she thinks Congress should restrict 401k plans from having the ability to include crypto assets. And this has been debated ever since Fidelity, one of the biggest in the world, announced that it would allow Bitcoin in its plans. 
And I don't care if Congress thinks it's risky. It's up to the crypto community. It's up to individuals. They already have the nonsense prohibiting everybody else in this ecosystem that is not officially an accredited investor from investing. And really, they're not protecting us from risk. They're protecting us from opportunity and only allowing the rich to get richer. It's our savings and it should be our choice. Now, speaking of that, we have iTrust Capital linked in the YouTube video description. This is a free 401k in crypto retirement account. I have a Roth IRA here, meaning that all gains in the future are taxed at 0% capital gains. So I treat iTrust Capital since it's 100% free. There's no monthly fees. I treat it as my moon bag for my retirement account. If you have an old 401k or you just have an IRA for your kid that's 18, why on earth would you not have a little exposure into the cryptocurrency market? And I know that most people only want to talk about cryptocurrency when we're going in an uptrend or when prices are at an all-time high price. But the most important time to enter or begin staggering in buys is when prices are pushing all-time low prices or, for example, are down 90%. Historically, over the last 10 years, this is the time to DCA. So again, this is linked in the top of the YouTube video description. And if you already have an account and you share this with friends and family, you can both get $200 for every funded account. So that's definitely an opportunity for everybody. And this is valid until June 30th. They've had over 5 billion transactions, 2,000 plus 5-star reviews. You get the gist. We can see their asset list. And I'm expecting a variety of assets to be listed shortly. And this will be linked in the top of the YouTube video description. And as you can see, iTrust Capital on Twitter mentioning that as well. Get $200 for every funded account. And last but not least for a laugh, so we have Jamie XRP. Does anyone else know people who aren't in crypto, but they know you're in crypto, and they text you to make sure that you're aware that prices are going down? In quotes, oof, seen that Bitcoin today? Never when it goes up, only when it goes down. Crypto life. Usually my reply is, yeah, thanks, man. I had no idea that my bags were down 90%. Hope you enjoyed this video. Big thanks to all that like and sub, and I'll catch you in the next one.